Okay, let's talk about projectile motion. A projectile looks something like this. It follows this path. Okay? Just like when I throw a chalk. And this is the initial position. And this is the initial velocity. It's called V. <clears throat> What's special about projectile motion is that at any instant in time, this object is subject to one acceleration. And it's a constant acceleration, which is negative G. Okay. And this is the J direction, where J Half of J direction is defined as going up, and positive I is defined as going to the right. That's my convention. Okay. So a projectile is subject to one single acceleration downward, okay, and it's exactly equal to G, which is 9.81 meter per second squared. So. <coughs> For this projectile, because of the fact that this is under a single constant acceleration in the J direction only, and there's no acceleration in the I direction, it means that I can write down the Cartesian representation of the acceleration in the I direction, in the J direction, and in the k direction if I want, okay, for three-dimensional, although okay, we're going to limit our discussion of projectile motion to two dimensions. So, k is always zero. Okay. So, <coughs> with acceleration being constant in the j direction, so this is just g, and then in the i direction, it's just zero. Okay, so now we have this equation for acceleration for a projectile. Now, from here, you can easily integrate to get velocity. Okay. We integrate. So, zero, integrated, some constant. Okay, let's just call it Cx, okay. i direction. Now, this is a constant integrated, so this becomes negative g t and plus some of the constant t y j. Okay, we can integrate once more to get the position. And that gives us this integrated dx t right, plus some other constant that's called the dx prime in the i direction right, plus integrate these two you get negative one half g t squared plus c y t plus c y prime okay, some other constant j so now we have these three equations, and we can analyze it independently in each direction. The i direction, it behaves this way. In the j direction, it behaves as such. So, <clears throat> that's why we say that the projectile motion can be analyzed independently in each direction because the I direction can be handled independent from the, the J direction, I and J direction. An example. <coughs>